Hey nothing. again. Remember this? Oh, shit. Die back. Yep. Or you'll regret it. That's where we are. I really wasn't ready to walk into this encounter at all. I don't really have any memory of this area, so I didn't have any idea what to expect. I dive to the left as soon as possible, because sometimes the involves escape. If you can get enemies off the screen, they'll just stand there. It's a bit cheesy, but I think we need all the help we can get. As the first arrow comes flying in, it reminds me that this is a new area and we get a new party member. This archer. He's quickly conscripted and we'll go over him properly in a bit. I didn't even look at him until afterwards. Now, the hobgoblin is technically closer, but we chased him in here from another area. We've already seen him, so I don't think it counts. Speaking of, this cheeky bastard only just walks right back out at the start of the fight. Honestly. It's definitely a rocky start. I really should have dispelled the enemy's buffs with Shawat, but instead I spend a bunch of time panicking, trying to get the party positioned, and chain chugging potions on Sparky. The old keep him off the screen trick did work though, and the captain just twiddled his thumbs over there for the duration of the fight. We send in the summons, settle into what should be an easy ending, and then more baddies come down the stairs. Luckily, it all works out, but I'm glad we didn't manage to three hostiles in that fight from the very start. While we finish up, let's take a look at our new guy. He's an evil ranger, which is something the game doesn't usually let you do. He was a slaver, so we'll call him Cuffs. After this fight, I also figured out how to get the custom portraits and names into the game. Happy days. Cuffs comes in handy pretty much right away. Trolls need to be hit with fire or acid, and our only sources of that are either pretty awkward or totally overkill spells from Poser. Luckily, I remembered that we picked up some fire arrows and Cuffs makes quick work of them. While this is going on, something pretty awesome is that when Shawat leveled up, he suddenly gained access to all the cleric spells he was missing. Nice. A few more encounters as we make our way through the boat before we come to what I now know is the actual main entrance. It doesn't look that bad, and then more stream in, and then more. I'm very glad we saved those fireballs earlier. It looks like we could have come in this way and gotten another melee guy instead of our ranger, but I don't feel like we've missed out. As we exit, the guard outside is hostile now, but we already got Cavale from the slum, so we just put him in the ground. In an attempt to satisfy my urge to run laps around the same map, we head straight back to the Copper Cornet, we take a brief aside to pick up the Fur Crag quest, what an errand that will turn out to be, before heading off to the back rooms where the slaves are. The way the NPCs spawn in this area makes it impossible to grab anyone but this really rubbish guard, as he has to be on screen for the others to spawn. He is completely useless, so we don't even bother to catch him. I would have loved another wizard, but oh well. We complete this rather easy encounter and talk with Hendak. I beg of you, please free us! Before we continue doing the quest backwards, we'll make a quick detour to sell our stuff to the guy we're about to kill. We dispatch this wolf before making our way down to the Beastmaster. This was another encounter that really shows that we're just about on the edge of being functional. We shouldn't be struggling with bears. Luckily, a few of the animals stay in their rooms and we're able to just close the door on some of the other ones. With the key in our hands, we follow Hendak and his buddies on their vengeance spree. Go now and freeze the women! Hendak will strike his blade into the heart of our so-called owner! What?! Hendak?! You ignorant, barbaric slave! You're behind all of this chaos, aren't you? I am taken out of your heart! Enough, Pete. You no longer own me. And I'll ensure that you no longer claim ownership of any other as well. I have survived the world's fighting for me. We shall see. And I make sure to get a shot in on the proprietor just to pick up some XP. Plant a blade in your inner I will. It is finally over, mate. All the years of cruel and evil acts that you have committed for nothing more than coins in your pocket. Burn it, you abyss. Fiend! I owe you my thanks once again. With Hendak now in charge of the bar, we get a boatload of quest XP, and then because we mistakenly did this entire quest backwards, we get all of the XP for the follow-ups as well. As half the party level up, I actually make quite a sad discovery. Cuff's longbow has been unequipped. 
It looks like he's just been wielding the bow completely invalidly this entire time, as it needs 18 strength and he has a puny 11, and clearly the game checks when he levels up. Luckily, Shawat is among the members of the party that have just leveled up, so we have an answer. We throw out a strength of one spell on the party and Cuff's longbow is straight back into his hands. At least until he levels up again, I guess. Now, it's finally time to strike out on our search for more party members. We get Shawat a room at the inn and depart without him for now. Things don't go exactly to plan as we are attacked in a random encounter on the way out. You have been waylaid by enemies and must defend yourself. We pick up a random slaver thief who is basically a worse cuffs. The fight is actually pretty dicey somehow, and we come very, very, very close to losing a party member. The new guy helps us out in this encounter, but after that, it's off to the Pokemon PC for him. If we end up using him, he can have a nickname then, but for now he just gets a description. We did throw around in the gates for a moment before striking out into the big wide world. I scroll across the map towards Windspur Hills, and that is when I see it. Watcher's Keep. Watcher's Keep is an end game dungeon, but it's available now it seems. Brilliant. We can just poke our heads in, grab something amazing, and leave. Here. We are atop the ancient prison at last. We stride into the halls of the keep. I'm salivating at the thought of the amazing party member we're about to. What the hell? Another one? Yes! For the second time! It's an air method! I don't even kill them. I just close the door. Quietly contemplate what I did to deserve this. And leave. Leaving this failure yes. behind us, we head out to our original destination. Unfortunately, I'm foiled again as the enemies I was planning on adding to the team are in fact required in order for the quest to advance. They have to be killed, or the game just gets confused and sits there doing nothing. It's a shame too, as the Ogre Mage model looks absolutely sick, and these guys are actually paladins class-wise, and we probably won't have another opportunity to catch any of them. goes on here. Continuing this, the very next encounter is the same, and it's really unfortunate as we could have picked up a level 14 cleric, and it would have been a massive power boost for us. But the game won't advance with her alive, so she has to go. That still leaves us with an encounter floating around in the overworld area, and I know just who I want, assuming I can get away with it. I remember from earlier playthroughs that there are a group of powerful fighters over here, somewhere, but I need to make sure that the enemies they're fighting don't show up on my screen. I edge slowly closer and closer, making sure to only see one fighter and never the gnolls they are hunting. After a bit of trepidation, they clear out all the gnolls and transform into werewolves. We grab one, grab all their stuff, and back off. I form a defensive line with the party closer to the entrance. But seeing as how they tear through my summons, I elect to bust out the Joe Star secret technique. Yes. Consider it done. Not to stop continuing a series of poor decisions, I decide to go to trade meet, I'm immediately attacked, and then a glitch in the game forces me to remove all of my party members. I'll just let live double give you an idea of how things were going. Things were clearly going well. I hadn't yet realised that the behaviour of the party members seemed to have changed in the remaster when it comes to being kicked out of the party anyway. In the OG version of the game, they would say goodbye and then wander off the screen, never to be seen again. In the remaster, it looks like they just stand there in place, which is really convenient and I wish I'd known that before having to do this party switching dance in this encounter. Anyway, after all of that, our new party member is Silvertongue. He has great stats, attacks really fast, and is immune to a bunch of normal weaponry. We also grabbed a big cat as our trade meet encounter, and I put him into the PC. After a brief encounter with the man who will eventually kill our main character,
we head back yet again to what we're actually supposed to be doing. Getting into the dungeon proper, the first encounter of the area is a hobgoblin archer. I pass. I'm slightly worried by the vampiric mist, but Silvertongue tears through the encounter, dishing out really good damage. I'm still being a giant pack rat at this point in the game, so I trudge back to the store to unload. While we're back in civilization, we run into another unexpected issue. Poser is too stupid to mage properly. She only has an intelligence of 9, and now that we're getting to level 6 spells, she just isn't smart enough to put them into her spellbook. Luckily, we can solve the issue with drugs. But it does mean it's going to cost us money every time we want to learn any new spells. Sparky is really close to leveling up, so while we're here we scribe a few more scrolls just for the XP. And I rectify a giant mistake I made at the beginning of the game and give Sparky proficiency in the short bow. Hopefully he'll actually have something to do in combat now. And again, not to end a trip without issue, I stupidly take off Cuff's bow. Oh, the bow! And we can't put it back on because Shawat isn't in the party. We get a different that worse bow that's easier to use and give that to him. Back over in the dungeon, we work our way through the first area, felling groups of enemies and narrowly avoiding walking into what could have been a TPK with these kamikaze kolbodes. Your vein of terror stops here, I swear! What is my task? Consider it done. The encounter for the next area is an orc archer, and we don't catch them. We have to do some in-combat lockpicking this fight, as the archers are all behind bars, and it shows that we've really been neglecting our open lock skill, because it takes many, many attempts to open the door in the middle of combat. I then stupidly try and rest, and almost get killed by shadows. I tell myself that resting should be done in the earlier area, where the enemies are easier, and I absolutely don't get screwed over by resting in this area again later. A few simple encounters in this corridor later, and we come across yet another reminder that we really aren't ready for this at all. The Troll Chef. Oh man, you know things aren't going well when the Troll Chef is the threat. I mean, uh, the troll chef. 